We are back, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Fatal Showdown. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? We came back once again. How long has it been? I want to say at least 25 years. And man, I messed that up. Sorry. <laughs> Feels like it's been forever. But uh, we're back, dude. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Uh, we just had the release of Sam Show. And uh, despite the fact that we were supposed to have a show a few times now and we were not able to pull it off i'm happy we're back and all that means is that there's loads of shit to talk about there is a ton of stuff to talk about you mentioned the uh, the botched episode where we we basically hyped the hell out of it and then uh i had to play code vein had to play code vein instead <laughs> dude i hyped myself up i was really excited about it. i don't I even right remember why we couldn't do it I think Gibby Gibby died <laughs> and Gibby, resurrected. G- yeah, Gibby point. Gibby's house got hit by a thunderbolt and literally got knocked off the grid for that yeah. period of time because it literally came back up after the time slot ended. So mm-hmm. I I just think like you know the the mother nature was against Fatal Showdown making its comeback that week, but she has not stood in our way this week. We are back after the release of Samurai Showdown on PS4 and Xbox One. As you said, we have plenty of things to talk about. Let's start mm-hmm. with that. What a launch! I have to say. Uh, yeah, and, uh, it, so, just, I guess, to go back a while, I know we've talked about it on the show, or not on the show, but on our streams and stuff, mm-hmm. but, you know, we never got to get to the point where they address the whole frames of lag, right? Right. Which, it leading into the release of the game, the fact that they addressed that, it just made the release that much more positive, right? The air about the release of Sam show was very anticipated and high hopes were high. People were ready to get their hands on the game. And, uh, that was the last check in the box that they needed to clear out in order for them to have a pretty successful launch and people really playing this game, uh, taking it seriously in a competitive way. Agreed. Um, their response to the eight frames of lag issue or delay, um, not something you see, very actually at all in the fighting game community and I'm, and I'm talking about in terms of the promptness of the response you know um mm-hmm. a, a lot of other companies have understood that those things were in there and they've been brought to their attention by the communities that play these games and mm-hmm. i'm not saying that they purposefully lagged on fixing it but it was not done nearly as quickly and not necessarily in the manner that snk addressed it because not only did they fix it quickly enough for it to be fixed before release but they worked with the community member that discovered the issue mm-hmm. that was that's unprecedented as far as i know at least for them I mean, it's pretty crazy to open yourself up as a uh, as a company and pretty much be open to criticism and stuff like that and oh. then try to address it so quickly. I mean, I've never seen that before. Uh, what you do see is you see them double down on something else, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you could go back to any of these games 
that people have considered to be like really great versions at one point in time uh some bullshit got thrown at the wall and we're like no trust me you guys don't know about frames this game is supposed to be that laggy because you don't know shit about developing games i don't know if you guys remember who said that but uh, huh. that's a that's a that's a little easter egg for you if you're part of the community but. Well, i mean I, i'm pretty yeah. sure some people remember that but you're right they did not double down on their bs they instead said you mm -hmm. know what or they did the exact opposite of that they didn't about face and in this mm -hmm. industry, like you said, it's a huge risk to put yourself out there like that. At least it seems to be that way. Because then you're like, mm -hmm. you start asking yourself, well, who's really running this ship? Is it me or is it the fans or is it these <laughs> random nerds that do lag tests? Do I have to start listening to every nerd on Twitter that does a lag test? Yeah. Yes, you probably should because they're probably right. Shout out to the nerds that do lag tests. They're only here to help. And SNK, with great maturity, mm -hmm. took a shot with a person that they really had no other reason to believe other than the fact that, you know, he was giving them inf information that they could, you know, they could validate. Yeah, I don't even know who this person is, but apparently it was legit. It, it's <laughs> and super legit. They had to address it, yeah. Um, uh, but just to let you guys know, we are going to be reviewing the game in its entirety. Right now, we're just talking about uh, the release, how people anticipated it, and what's been going on in the community. And then we're going to get to the nitty-gritty and tell you what we think of the actual game in its entirety. But yeah, back on topic. Mm. Um, the hopes were high. People were ready for this game. People got the game early, and they started playing it. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of people liked what they saw. Yeah. Uh, so, like we uh the uh the dip <laughs> no, the review copies came out. Not that the demo. The demo was another issue entirely. And I would I could do a whole episode on how messed up that was. Mm -hmm. Um. The review copies came out, and people started basically putting out as much content as they could on Twitter, on YouTube, and a lot of excitement started building around it. And there already was a lot of excitement that had been mm -hmm. building around Samurai Showdown, you know? Um, we, we famously did not get our copy until halfway in the middle <laughs> of the week, uh, so we could not uh, hit the ground running on that. But as soon as we, we got our We are a, but a humble Twitch channel. We're just, we are but humble people, and we... Uh, we didn't put it in the demands. But it's hey, li it's literally still... you and I on a co podcast. That's it. Why would they give a <laughs> shit? <laughs> Dude, even when we try to include Gibby, it's like, yes, we're going to have a podcast where Gibby's here, and we're going to be talking about SNK, Neo Geo games, and here we go. It's Mount Pouts Arcade all over again. <laughs> Mount Patsu Arcade hosts Fatal Showdown. Dude, he, so, You're welcome, folks. so Gibby's supposed to be on this show. Sidebar, Gibby's supposed yeah. to be on this show. And he's like, we're talking to him about it at the beginning of the week. Remember that? And we're uh -huh. like, hey, so you want to do a Fatal Showdown this week? And he's like, I can't make it. I told you assholes to do this last week, but no one listens to me because I oh, vibrate dude. in another dimension. Yeah, dude. We've been saying about <laughs> Gibby that the reason why we tune him out is because he vibrates like in another dimension and shit. <laughs> he's like in another world. You know? He yeah. turn up the volume before we can actually like realize he's here. But anyway, he couldn't join us because he's down at CEO running the Samurai Showdown side tournament. The first Samurai Showdown tournament at a major. Uh -huh. um, so good luck to him. We wish he could be here. But I'm pretty sure he'll be here in spirit. He actually gave us a list of things he wants to yell about, and we'll try our best to get to those. But um, but yeah, no, like we didn't get our review copy, so we got to watch a lot of other people get on. And actually, for me, that was really cool. You know, uh, mm -hmm. to see not just necessarily people I already knew playing the game and enjoying it, but a lot of people who most likely would have not have fucked with the game if they didn't get it for free and then end up enjoying it afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. that was really exciting for me. Now, I don't know if they're going to stick with it afterwards. I don't know if they're going to be competitive with it, but it was really nice to see that it had that kind of appeal and that SNK could reach out to these, you know, these audiences and take mm -hmm. a huge bite, you know? I... Well, I think I think we're noticing uh, with the release of this game and how well streamers are doing in their numbers, which is surprising to me, uh, that this is most definitely, and we've been saying this here at Game Goons, mm -hmm. that KOF and Samurai Showdown, two completely different entities, you know, and they've been attracting different types of people. And uh, it's it's kind of like... And I told you this before the show. KOF, I think people have pretty much made up their mind whether they're going to mess with it or not. Samurai Showdown, however, is a completely different beast. You know, and you see people, uh, no pun intended, embracing the game for what it is and the different play styles of what it is. And, and 
having fun exploring the game. Where it's like, and KOF is such a legacy game of like great top players and just people who've been playing this game for so long, like for generations at this point, <laughs> um, that it's really hard to get your bearings early. But this game feels different, man. This game feels like people are getting their bearings really early. Especially yep. uh, talented players. You already see them do one. I'm seeing a lot of talented players do well, and they're actually sharing their information in a way that, you know, not a lot of KOF players are necessarily known for doing that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we definitely see like people like Kizzy K running the Samurai Show on stream earlier today. Really mm -hmm. informative because he talks his way through what he's planning on mm -hmm. doing, and you really get a feel, if he hadn't already gotten one, for how mm -hmm. the, the game flows, at least in his mind. You know, and it yeah. may be perfect. It may not be perfect. But the point is, you have a guide. Not a lot of people in KOF, maybe Juicebox is probably the best example of that in KOF. But mm -hmm. Juicebox was like an anomaly in KOF. You know, he was like yeah. a leader that could also talk you through things. Not a lot of people in that scene could do that. Um, but there's a ton of there's no un, in, there's no end of the people in the FGC overall. And they all yep. seem to be fucking with Sam show. Well, the other thing is, is, is something that we don't we didn't really get in KOF was that people didn't really get to tell you, like the other top players from other games didn't get to tell you their opinions and people kind of listened to it. They, mm -hmm. they, people's opinions about KOF kind of were like, what, well, what the fuck do you know? Right, like, yeah. Like that's how a lot of people acted with KOF. I don't think you can say that with Samurai Showdown. I think this game is, and this isn't trashing it in any way, this is a positive, is very basic in its gameplay enough that really good fighting game players can take advantage of this game very quickly mm -hmm. um and it's really interesting to hear the thought processes of some of these top players like kizzy who's really good at breaking down what he's doing and explaining why mm -hmm. uh and get insight from people we usually don't get insight from right because obviously he does great in guilty gear and yes. other games um Incredible. And here and there, opinions about stuff. It, it opens our minds as as primarily SNK players to be like, oh, this is how this guy would play it. We're, we always talk about how Justin Wong adapts to any game that he plays. I, I can't wait for him to play this game and stream it, man. Like that would be. Can you imagine Justin Wong just like playing Samurai Showdown and just like everybody being in there listening to him, sharing ideas, and just being chill? That's the kind of atmosphere he brings. I, I think he just needs time. I don't know. He said something on Twitter like been busy or something oh he's a dad man believe me i know he needs oh, yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. gonna be a minute <laughs> but right. um the thing is is like it, it we talk a lot about what that could have happened with dragon ball fighters and how i could have brought everybody together and we're kind of mm -hmm. seeing the same thing happening with samurai showdown um that there are all these different trains of thoughts these different disciplines coming together for this game and like and it is simple it's simplistic it's in the fact where I'm not saying you don't have to dig too deep into it, but you're probably going to get the gist of it pretty early in comparison to other games where there's things like, like in KOF, where there's so many legacy <coughs> skills that you have to know, or you don't have to mm -hmm. know, but you you probably would do well to know, and then you got to learn three characters on top of that, you know? It's a pretty tall order. It's not mm -hmm. incredibly hard. It's not impossible. But I can see how that is a little daunting to people on paper. Whereas with Sam mm -hmm. Show, they just say, you know, you hit the right button at the right time and <coughs> you will be rewarded greatly. That's it. If your fundamentals are strong and understanding, like, you got good reads, you got the good spacing, you got understanding of when it's your turn and when it's not your turn. This game, eh, you multiply that skill set times 10, and there you go. You can definitely take advantage of this game in a really good way. Totally. Let's talk about that for a second. We're talking about turns here, and that's probably the biggest the biggest hurdle at first for a lot of new players is like, how do I take my turn in this game? Because mm -hmm. unlike a lot of fighting games where I start blocking and I just have to wait for the, the block string to be done, there aren't uh -huh. any real block strings here, you know? In fact, if I block, the real mix-up game begins on my part because I'm like, am I just gonna, am I gonna punish you know, mm. or am I going to bait out your your parry attempt? Mm. You know, like there are, there's several things that I cannot do or do that you have to react to after you get put in recoil. Mm. Uh, I think once people are able to get used to that, this game's going to become a lot more comfortable for them. Right now, I see a lot of people just kind of swinging, you know, back and forth. They're just throwing out haymakers and stuff. And, uh, fame, and I'm actually asking them, why is nobody parrying? It's just they're just not comfortable with it yet. 
But once they are, and once they realize, like, oh, yeah, you know, there's definitely a reason why I shouldn't just mash this button, then you're going to be seeing people get, like, really cautious with their approach. You're, talk- you're talking about the deflects, right? The deflects, yeah. Uh, so just play Hanzo, man, because he doesn't have good recall options. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because you're kind of forced to do shit like that. It's funny because I was seeing Kizzy play a Hanzo player earlier. And he was doing that shit a lot, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, oh, that makes sense, dude. He doesn't have a lot of good recoil options. So he would do uh, running, I believe it's running, uh, hard slash. And he'd get recoiled. Or maybe it was regular hard slash. Uh, one of them. He'd get recoiled and he'd go straight into the parry deflect. And I was like, oh, okay, made sense. Makes sense. Man. It's... But yeah, anyway, <laughs> speaking on Poor Hanzo. how... <laughs> well received <laughs> this game has been there's been a few events that have already happened um nlbc has been supporting this game really well they're one of the people that um i believe aru had a early copy and he took it over there to go get some games in saw a lot of good uh early footage from over there uh now henry said is running shit apparently again so oh yeah dude you know it's yeah. nice to see that guy playing again smart player uh, that was cool. They had their, well, they had their uh, exhibition match with Aru versus Sonic Soul. Oh Another man! Dude. All right, don't. We're not, we're not even gonna front. You were watching that before the the show. And... Yeah, I, I was watching it, and you know that's that's cool on their part that they're willing to put their balls on the table so early. <laughs> because that, I would never do that. I would never be like, yo, let me get this. 100 bucks on this ever. shit, boy. Yo, dude, this game's not even technically out. Like, I'm about to fucking do this shit. <laughs> you know? But no, no dude, I, I'll get I'll get nervous. Uh, I, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll fuck. I will eat shit. I will absolutely. And I know this about myself. It's I'm, just not worth it. I'm not I don't want to be first. I'm not fronting <laughs> that I would not put 100 on it. Day not put a hundred on day zero uh-huh. first seven never. Um, I might bet on some KOF shit though, but oh, I'm, I'm side not bet. Hundred percent, I'd side bet. If it's just like talking about whose fundamentals are the best, oh, I'd side bet on yeah, that. Yeah. But I'm like, nah, man. Like my money and me playing. But that being said, the amount of commitment, the level of you know just sheer hype for this game that these guys believed in themselves enough. That they thought they could yeah. win a hundred bucks off the first seven. And if they didn't think one of them didn't think they can win, they were like, you know what? Promoting the game is worth it. Promoting the game is worth this seven no ass whoopings about the I'm about to catch. Hey, 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 but I'm about to keep it real with you. Like, so is that clout, bro. That clout's fucking real. You get that early copy and you get in a money match uh, right off the bat. Uh, People aren't going to know your name, dude. Immortalized after that, dude. You think people don't know Sonic Soul, bro? <laughs> they definitely know Sonic Soul. He's been out there doing work. His name's out there. He's got one of the most active YouTube channels for Samurai Showdown, and he was big in promoting the game pre-release. So he was already, he was early to the draw. Aru is the best Sam Show player in the country, according to... Aru? Perhaps Aru? <laughs> yeah, it's like, who else <laughs> You know? No, well, he's definitely yeah. got the, he's got the, uh... The accolades to to prove it. I mean, he won the side tournament at Combo Breaker, right? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Juice is his favorite movie. He's got the juice. He's there. got the juice, dude. Like that's the guy yeah. you got to listen to. Not even being sarcastic or anything. Like these are the guys that you know they drew blood early on. Now, whether or not they can keep that going for the rest of the season, who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, because there are a lot of strong players that are coming out. We mentioned Henry Sin, who got a hold of this game finally, and he just mm-hmm. won in LBC last night, I believe. Um, he was already looking pretty strong at the game beforehand, and now he's over there. I saw his tier list. He's putting an Earthquake up at the top. I'm like, whoa, what do you know that we don't? I don't know. I don't listen to anybody, dude. These tier lists, list. though, right? I fucking hate tier lists. <laughs> so, so, so lately, I don't know what's up with everybody. A tier list for everything. That's but, Justin's fault. Don't even don't blame it. Don't put this on nobody else. It's just an, a new version of getting clout, but it's like you purposely have to do some fuck shit in that tier list. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Like he put fucking earthquake number one. <laughs> oh, he put him like on the top. Oh, by the way, Sin got second. My bad. I thought he won. Somebody was saying he won. Sin got second, and then he put earthquake in like top tier. So I think I think something's going on over there that we don't know about. You know? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's well, early maybe though. Or maybe they don't know. Who knows? No one knows anything. <laughs> knows? I don't want to say no one knows but, anything because, like you said, this game is not incredibly hard to learn quickly. 
and people that are on top of this game right now have been known to adapt to situations very, you know, expediently, if that's the right term for that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if by Evo we are looking at fairly high level, you know? A lot of people were worried that a month in between release and Evo was not enough to really get, you know, your teeth sank into this game. But I do think... I would still prefer more time. Don't get me wrong. I would still prefer much more time. But a month, the way things are going right now, it's not looking too bad. Uh, well, I mean, so let's move on to the other side of the coast. There's been some uh, action out here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's at least two very competent uh, Sam Show players out here in the West that I know of. Uh, and that's Fu and Nerd Josh, and they've been busy. As well as a lot of other surprise people that show up to play this game that have been playing this game that uh, usually frequent the FGC events out here. Oh, yeah. So you guys uh, have yeah Fu, you have Nerd Josh, you got Julian, beautiful dude, who's learning Sam Shell from Fu. Um, mm -hmm. You got our boy Reynold, who uh, oh. I don't think he counts. Reynold. Re so Reynold. Uh, on the Dropkick event on in Long Beach on Monday. First time ever touching the game. Second place <laughs> at the tournament. The only person he lost to was Nerd Josh, right? Yeah. That's pretty crazy, man. Uh, I don't know what that says. Like, is Reynolds that caliber? Or is it this game where you could just take to the skies real quick because it really highlights... Your top player status. I, I want to say it's right now. It's probably the game. I think this is probably the perfect game for an <laughs> asshole like Reynolds. You know, oh, like, this yeah. game is like really good for someone who's going to call out their opponent and hope their opponent has the right punish for these situations. And if they mm -hmm. don't, they're going to look ridiculous getting hit by uh, certain setups. Like case in point, last night at Wednesday night fights, where Reynolds proceeded to do neutral Hanzo teleport into command grab. And his opponent, I forget his name, uh, it doesn't really matter at this point because he got dunked <laughs> off of that setup. And that was literally just like, yeah, that's such a rental thing to do. But I also feel like that kind of that the game almost encourages that. Because that game is that move is terrible. The only reason why it's there, I assume, is to fuck you up because you have bad execution, you know? Or right now, you're dude, trying to right style now, on somebody. It's it's like it's it's like when KOF 13 first released and people were just getting into the game. A lot of people don't know the game that well, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, Reynold never talks about how he has a lot of legacy experience. Not that he played Sam Show in, uh, like, a tournament setting. But, look, I never got to play any of these fighting games with my brother, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like, other people. I'm, I don't live nearby any scene. So I only learned this shit till later. But Reynold knows something about something. He but he definitely something. has not played. He did not get an early copy. <laughs> No, he was actually he was actually upset about that. But you know that's what you get for being a civilian. You know you had your one chance with Dragon Ball, and you decided to be a family man. Sorry, oh, bro. <laughs> um, but let's talk about Josh for a second. Josh was one of the guys who did get one of the early copies, and he went straight in on streaming Samurai Showdown to the masses. And it was a great. It's still a straight. It was still a great stream to uh, follow because he's pretty knowledgeable about the game. He's winning tournaments that he's going to. Um, and he's got a great ecosystem around him. He lives with Killer Kai, El Overling. Mm -hmm. You know, so those guys have just been beating each other up all day a month in this game. I think mm -hmm. I think uh, Killer Kai got a third place at Dropkick. He did really well with guess fucking who, bro? With Genjiro. Is is he the kid boo of Wow Sancho? <laughs> Dude, uh, when I picked him up, I was like, finally, it's my turn. I picked the kid boo. <laughs> so I could just do shit. I, I, I personally feel like Ginjiro is most likely the I feel like he's the best character in the game. Mm -hmm. He's de he's Bardock. <laughs> he's Bardock? <laughs> he's Can season you? one Bardock, man. Um Ginjiro mm -hmm. is probably the best I've ever seen him, and I can't necessarily tell if that's because he's just because he's good or if because the people around him are possibly a little less than they were in previous games and just can't really compete with the, sim the, simplistic, the simplicity of Gendro well, that is also very solid. Well, dude, just think about think about it this way. 
it's you could get so good so fast with that character. Mm-hmm. It's noticeable. It's it's like I usually don't get a good that good of a character off the bat in fighting games. Like usually my picks are like they're okay. They don't have like super abusive anything. But dude, this feels like I've been driving a Honda Civic all my life, <laughs> and and then I just got into like a sports car. You know, it's like oh shit, dude. This is what it's like to fucking play top tier off the bat. Like this is like like you don't you don't know what top tier is until you play top tier. <laughs> It's like, I didn't know. I didn't know. You've been struggling all your life. You're just like, damn, I have no idea. Dude, I'm here having a time DPs that don't work. <laughs> like, you got to space it perfectly. Dude, Genjiro's DPs are all fucking gangster as fuck, bro. It's, like, <laughs> it's the most hood DPs of all time, bro. It Dude, goes like almost half screen sometimes. <laughs> it's pretty goddamn ignorant, honestly. I won't even lie about yeah. that. And I and I was someone who was trying to front like I wasn't going to main Genjiro, even though I played Gendro in every Samurai Shodown game I've ever touched. Mm. And the moment I found out he was good, I was just like, oh, shit, dude. I'm going to have to have some competition. You know, I'm about to get, I'm about to get exposed, dude. Like, I said, this is my homie, and I'm about to get beat by every Gendro in America. I better switch to Kilshiro. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at you, man. There was a tweet made about you. There was. I know, man. It's Kizzy. He was like, oh, you over here playing your secondary trying to OS me, huh? Yeah, dude, no, nah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. I'm playing uh, Kyoshiro and uh, Yashimaru right now. So if I lose, it's because I'm at 50% power. Oh, man, yeah. You don't deserve my to... best, baby. <laughs> they're already trying to throw Yashimaru in the tank. Yashimaru, the oh, there was a Tatsu over there talking about he's garbage, man. He's trash. Don't touch him. <laughs> yeah. Hazardous waste. Tatsu got yeah. up in his ass today, and a lot of people were trying to come out of his neck for it. And I was like, you know what, dude, like... Let's let it marinate a little bit. Everybody go retire to their uh, respective uh, respective corners and just wait it out. Let's wait until Evo. When the Evo rolls around, <coughs> and if Yashimaru wins Evo, I want everybody to shut the fuck up still because we still got another year of competition. <coughs> it's early well, as hell right now. I'm talking about what we don't know. Um, we don't know what other regions of the world are up to. Uh, specifically, we don't know what Japan's up to. I... I think I've seen more from other countries than I've seen from Japan. Yeah, Japan has actually been very quiet. I want to say that they're <laughs> maybe they're doing like the secret studying, you know, sessions. Like I've seen stuff from mm -hmm. Japan. There were some early videos from Japan for sure. Like you know the uh, the short lived Ginjiro unblockable setup. You know that was something that was came, that came out of Japan for the most part. Um, but. Yeah, man, most of the stuff we've been seeing for Samurai Showdown, and it might be because we, we live in America. It's been, it's been coming out of the USA, mm -hmm. and I guess some parts of Europe also. Well, oh, isn't it not even released out there? I think that's probably why. Or it, it didn't should. release at the same time. It should be out now, should. I mean, now, yeah, but... Like, um, did they not get early copies? Damn, fucking US privilege, but... Do Actually, actually, yeah, that's also a good point. I didn't see a lot of Japanese players streaming that from over there. So, mm -hmm. um, who knows? But then again, they are the ones to beat in this game. Well, are they? I don't know, because, you know, there's also the possibility that, uh, and we, well, let's, 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 let's preface this real quick. A, neither Abe or I are Sam Show historians, connoisseurs. We are new to this. Let's agree on that. Yeah, that's why that's why I was like, Gibby, what the fuck, bro? You, yeah, and we need you, you on this shit, right? this shit than we do. <laughs> as far as like the history goes for sure. I mean uh I'm in here real quick. He's I'm helping us out in the chat. Up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brought up China. I mean, there's a lot of other regions that I don't even know, dude. I don't even know if they play that. I just I just know if they play KOF or not, and it's it's a yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they so, definitely so, do. So I was gonna bring up China and Jaime built brought up China brought up China in the uh the chat room. So China. Apparently, they are insane at Sam Show 2. I don't know how they're feeling about this game at all. Uh, as far as I know, they were not not a lot of players. There was, there was a couple of players. You know, I think there was – um, what the hell is that guy's name? I'm not, I'm not going to try to butcher the names or like that, but I've seen some top Chinese players actually talk about going in on the game. Uh, there were some players from Taiwan, obviously, ET went in on the game. Um, mm -hmm. There is a threat to be seen out there potentially. You know, it's not entirely mm -hmm. America, Europe, Japan mm -hmm. could be China up in the mix and they could be taking everybody's cheeks. 
who knows, man? I mean, this is the road to Evo, uh, which is going to be really interesting because, again, uh, they have it. Well, when is it that they put out the brackets? Is it like the week before? For Evo? Um, Don't they usually give an update, though, of like, oh, this many people in this country are going here or something like that? I, I so think they I think they put out. the brackets. I think they give us at least two weeks because, one, these brackets are unlike any kind of brackets you're going to see in any other tournament. These are like literally thousands and thousands of people that are going to be getting reshuffled around before Evo even starts. So usually right. I think they give us like a week and a half, two weeks to actually look at it. And that's why I entered because I was like, dude, I want I want that rush of getting my bracket. I want to get my pool and just cringe like, who the fuck are these people? Wait, 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 wait. You entered? I entered Evo 2019 Samurai Showdown. I am in pool, sir. You don't even enter your local, bro. <laughs> you and Lebron, what happened? So Lebron does not know. By the way, I heard the, I heard the explanation. Still don't give a fuck. Bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Oh, I, I won't even bother with that because it's just it's unimportant. The point is, I was there. I didn't. I did not enter, but we had a great time commentating that tournament. Either way, oh, good I, time, boys. It was gotcha. a, a good time, boys. You know. Um, let, let me just put it this way. Wednesday Night Fights is not necessarily my cup of tea as a single Oh, I dad. thought you were going to shit on the players there. I was like, damn, the oh. sack on this dude. He's like, listen, <laughs> the competition there is not even worth my time. I mean... You know, and I feel <laughs> Lobano not entering. It's cool. I get it. That's why we commented. I mean, yeah, you know, why should we uh, ruin everybody else's fun, right? Oh, yeah. You know, oh. give him a chance. Give him a couple weeks and then, you know, third weekend. There you like, go. Damn, you fucking suck. Now, actually, it was really entertaining to commentate uh, last night because we're going to see Crack Fiend and Lamer Boy uh, clutch it out in grand finals. And while they're not Samurai Showdown players or even SNK game players classically, they are uh, accomplished fighting game players in their own right. And they had an interesting grand finals match between two players who obviously knew at the game but still had really good fundamentals. I would say they got really good fun. You guys look like you were having a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. That was the only way I could stay awake past 11 p.m., man. Dude, you know how many times that's happened to me when I've commentated? I'd be like, please give me a hype match because I'm about to fucking die on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was a funny thing. Like, all last night, all the matches were pretty damn sick, man. You know? Like, I, th I think it's 50% new game smell and 50% this game it just gives you the good shit. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, I saw some of the matches from Wednesday Night Fights SoCal Edition last night. Obviously, they were having a grand old time watching, you know, our boy Reynold run through the bracket, uh, having a good time watching him walk all over grand finals. James Chen and I forget who the other commentator was, but they were definitely uh, on. Them. Yeah, I don't know. I know it was James Chen. I feel like I know who that other, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Man. Excuse me. Anyway, so. Everybody's kind of got something to offer. and So anyway, yeah, I, I, I have entered EVO 2019 because I want to compete. I want that rush of getting my pool early and then knowing I'm probably not going to be in that pool by the EVO time, you know? So it's really an exercise in futility, but at the same time, I like that feeling. I haven't had that in a while. So I'm you know, feeling, <coughs> feeling pretty good about this year. My, just got to get out of my pool. That's my only thing. Got to get out of my pool, continue the tradition of making it out of the pool, and then commentating the rest of the tournament. So... I don't want to get into it just yet, but that whole feeling of, uh, you know, getting that rush. So my first time I'm ranked, got a little nervous. Oh, -ho! I, I lost the first match. <laughs> off the bat. Dude, dude, that's like way worse than me. And I, I was, I was like, well, I guess I got that loss out of the way. Cool. Now I could just play, you know, but yeah, I agree, man. I, I want to, and I, I actually really did want to go to Wednesday night fights yesterday. But I had to finish a resume for a new job. Baby. All right, dude. Real life. Hopefully, you get a hold of that new job because real life is mm -hmm. an important uh, piece to maintaining the facade that is esports. Um, right no, now, no, dude. I was gonna sacrifice it for day one tournaments. I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> I was gonna do it. All right, so, so I I love NorCal FGC and I want to keep doing what I can for them, and I'm. I'm making some moves to ensure that I'm able to support my scene for the rest of the year and possibly beyond. But for God's sakes, man, this is NorCal. We work for a living. Downtown San Francisco, 7.30 in the morning. I can't be out in Oakland until 2 a.m. I'm sorry. I can't do it. You were looking rough, my man. I'm looking super puzzled all night, man. <laughs> Had a great time, though. 
But seriously, yeah, you know, you get. Uh, I I had I feel like I haven't competed in a tournament in damn near a year. So this is going to be new for me uh, going to Evo again. Well, not only that, but we have the Gunoff coming up. Ooh. Uh, we did set a date, but I kind of forgot already. Uh, it might be the week. Also, if you guys didn't know, we're running a Neo Dojo on the fucking six. Yeah, the six. six. Yeah, man. You you go yes. July six. You that's a bold strategy, gentlemen. You know, Anime yeah. Expo weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're all busy people, and I guess that's the only day we come together and do it at super that's cool but though. yeah if you guys are in socal and near azusa uh roll through i'll be there gibby's there and hopefully a lot of other sam show snk heads show up that should and be a pretty good event actually uh anyways beyond that uh fuck, what was i gonna mention oh yeah zaguna if i don't know when the day is is we gotta reconvene with gibby because i told him what day it was he'd remember okay. but we got that too dude hey the opportunity is open. Things Chris, are cooking. Chris, you're finally in there, bro. Here Am we I, go. Do I have a shot at King Goon? I don't know. You're being playing dumb over there, playing uh, what's his face, uh, <laughs> Kyoshiro. Kyoshiro. You know, like, come on, dude, bust out that top tier Genjiro, bro. What are you doing? Uh, it's been so long since I had to play solid, but I think I think this is worth it. I think this is a good, this is a worthy cause to bust out the lane pockets. Hey man, there's no excuse. There is no excuse. Yeah. You you got rank now. God, it got. I, oh, I feel, like we, gotta, are, I feel we, like we gotta get to it real soon because I yeah, want to talk I'm, about. I'm, I'm about to bust straight up. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't talk uh, about is it, there anything else that we need to cover? Uh, the only thing I also wanted to mention, I'm probably talking about it at the end of the show as well. But Goon Suite at Evo uh, 2019, oh, okay. uh, August 1st, I believe. It's going to be the Thursday before Evo. Um, we'll be at the Mandalay Bay as usual. And we want you to come on by because we'll be streaming. We'll be having food. We'll be having drink. We'll have a good time. Uh, maybe some special guests show up. You know, hopefully you show up, meet all the goons, meet all the goon friends and whatnot. Uh, we'll have more information on that as the time goes. I think I put a tweet up about it. So uh, you did. if I can we'll find that, I'll put it, it up. I'll retweet that again. But yeah, Goon Suite Evo 2019 is going to be a good time. And I think we're ready for the review, man. Like we talked right, enough right. about what works and what's hold good. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Before we go into the review. Because I actually would like us to cut this part out and put it on YouTube. Okay. We're going to do an intro, and then we're going to get into it. Okay. And it's going to go like this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We got to the part where we are reviewing the new Samurai Showdown. There's been a lot of hype leading up to this release. And let me say, mixed bag of feelings. <laughs> What All do you right. want to go first with? Let's, let's go first. with the good stuff first, you know, because there is a lot oh. of good stuff in this game. You know, you've got the gameplay itself. They can't, you know, gloss over how beautiful this game looks to play, how great it feels to play. You know, after the eight mm -hmm. frames of lags were removed or re rectified, it feels buttery smooth to play this game now. To be fair, too, that was on release. On that release, was on release. That was fixed. So judging it off of release, good stuff. Good but even but even compared to other fighting games of right now, it feels better to play than some fighting games I played recently. You know that didn't have that issue on release or even before release. Not even you know a, a blip on the radar about it. So that's something that I really enjoyed about this game. Um, it kept its simplistic approach. It didn't try to overbloat itself with a bunch of features like some new games do. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very much a samurai showdown game in that respect, at least from what I've experienced. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, uh, shout outs to Crackpron who came over the pad on Friday when I was fiending for some offline matches because I just, I could have, I, I, I needed to see what it was like to play the game. But in just playing the game, it feels so good. I can't remember the last time I played a game that felt so responsive uh, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't. I've been having nothing but fun with the game as far as the gameplay goes. Uh, the more time I put into it, the more I get addicted to this game. Um, I can't really say that for anything else. And, and you know what it is? I think it is because it's a new experience for me. And I think it's a new experience for a lot of other people too because Sam Show isn't, some, isn't a game that a lot of people have really 
dug their heels into, mm -hmm. you know, and I haven't either. So this is really enlightening experience for me that I get to share with other people that probably normally wouldn't play with. And I think uh, it's it, it's not just the fact that it's enlightening and new, but it's it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun experience, even from like let's approach it as people who don't play fighting games that much. You know, just a couple of regular folks. You know, it's still fun to play. Get that get that burst rage, dude. You know, dude, yeah. And then get <laughs> the, the one, baby. How's that not dope, that. dude? Ah, uh, there was a ranked match that I had that it was like I by all intents and purposes should have lost that match. And I feel like I feel like whoever I was playing did not know how burst rage worked, because I burst, they jump, and then they lost. And I never saw him use that burst rage ever again, because you can actually rematch in ranked mode. Go figure. Something that we've been asking for in general for most S and K games, we finally got it. Only in ranked mode so obviously we are getting to the mixed bag portion of the review and a lot of it finds its home in the uh net play experience um this is not something that we're gonna enjoy because we played oh, so much KOF 14 right played so much KOF 14 and let's face it no one even played rank mode in KOF 14 longer than a, a week or a month you know i'm still stuck in the vortex of skipped rank mode yeah you missed the boat on that shit you're not gonna get out of it now you're forever no, dusty nobody plays anymore nope it's over you gotta play lover you gotta prove yourself in the lobbies man and you can never tell yeah. if anybody's playing for real or not but no uh samurai <laughs> showdown's net play experience is the biggest case of schizophrenia i've ever seen in uh a fighting game net play experience <laughs> well, I, I don't even think that's harsh i don't think even think that's harsh because i think well, that it's literally describing what i'm feeling you know i i play rank mode and connection's good if it's good and i can rematch as much as i want mm -hmm. and it, it's just like any other game in that respect right and so then i'm like okay cool they nailed rank mode and we mm -hmm. know they can do lobbies Let's go get these lobbies cracking so we can get the goon suite or the uh, the freaking boot camp going. Mm -hmm. Get those goons of mayhem, gods of mayhem shows mm -hmm. going. Anything, right? I bet you people want to run online tournaments, basically. Anyway, so you head over to the lobbies, and you're greeted by a very familiar picture, a familiar image. If you've played KOF 14, the lobby looks very similar. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you're like, I know this. I'm in the waiting room. I'm going to pop into the queue. And I'll wait my turn. I'm not going to be able to watch the match mid-match because it doesn't work in these kind of games. But, you know, I'll just wait for the next match and I'll watch that or I'll pop in for my turn. You can't even do that. Mm -hmm. It won't even allow you into the room if a match is occurring. Remember Gibby was having that issue where you and I were playing a match and we mm -hmm. sent the invite, but mm -hmm. he couldn't enter because we were playing a match. <clears throat> so that was, the, that was the first red flag for me. The second red flag came after our match where... We were just like, cool, just getting, you know, the waiting slot, you know, now that you're so, in. So, before you get into that, let's explain how the lobbies work in 14 when you're queued up. Okay, go ahead. Because technically, you're queued up in 14, and technically, you're queued up in Sam show, but you're not really, though, because it doesn't work that way. You, yourself, and the person who wins have to put themselves back into the position to play each other again. And As that, opposed to in KOF 14, it's winner stays on. Mm -hmm. If you so choose that function in your lobby room, you can choose elimination, in which case the loser Do they even have on. that option? They do not have the option as far as I've seen in this game. There's yeah, not even a series fair. option. You know what the series option is? It's ranked mode. It's fucking genius. <laughs> Dude, like, I got to find you. Like, for real? Like, if you can find your friend on ranked mode and you don't give a, a damn about any uh your points, I guess... It's perfect. That's your casual. That's your casual you know, right there. Because it works really similar to the way it works offline. It's like you just keep going. You just yeah. rematch. But you why? Can't... Why? Chris, why? Look, dude, me, you know, I'm the type of guy that I definitely like to give some people the benefit of the doubt. Sure. I'm not a I am not a smart man. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. I am not smart. So, I just assume, hey, maybe I just don't get it. And that's how I learn a lot of stuff, right? I was like, you know what? My instinct is, this is not working right. But then it's like, well, maybe I just don't know how to use it. So you, but you blame you yourself. Go, you, 
do you go through all those stages of doubt, right? Like, no, it's me, it's me, it's me. It's like a relationship. Like, like when you're in a relationship, you think all the problems are you, right? <laughs> at least, at least if, <laughs> I, I don't know. Me, yeah, that's no, all no, I, I totally I'm, got you, dude. I've been there. I, I'm like, you know what? I'm not being a good enough boyfriend, <laughs> friend, or whatever it is. I'm not being you a good know, role maybe, model to my daughter right now. Exactly. Maybe if I tried a little harder. And then you just start seeing like, hey, man, what's up? I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to work with you, but I keep feeling like this just is not working. Like you're getting no, and I'm you're, you're starting to when... think that it's you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm starting to think that maybe it just doesn't work. <laughs> and look, I will say this. The concept's really cool uh, of like how it has like uh, uh, Gibby was saying. It's kind of like the God, what's that uh, uh, martial arts? No, 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 no. The the concept behind like the oh uh, uh, the stuff. kendo yeah, yeah. He, the the concept was that which looks really cool like I really like it I I think it's really beautiful actually the the way the lobby looks mm -hmm. but I I don't understand like if there's somebody that can like maybe we're all doing it wrong but we're not though I've come to terms and we're not it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. So let's describe that a little bit here because there's been something that's been bothering me about how it doesn't work. Um, yeah. I have been saying this since it first happened. So let's face it. You you finish a match and you are greeted to by a, a countdown timer. It okay. says that the match results will be you know, cleared and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> countdown to zero. Mm -hmm. Once that countdown ends, the natural flow of things dictate that the loser gets out of the player set, the player slot, and the mm -hmm. next person in line jumps in. Mm -hmm. Instead, everybody is removed from the lineup and the player slots and put back into the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Problem one point five. Uh, mm -hmm. That on its own looks like a that looks like an accident. I don't know why anybody would ever want to experience a <laughs> net play experience like that. I don't know why anybody would actually choose to program a game like that. That looks like something that was just an oversight. So mm -hmm. I'll forgive them for that. The thing that I am not entirely sure I can forgive them for, and I'm sure they'll fix it when they when they can. It's not really that big of a deal, but <laughs> one of the biggest annoyances in KOF 14 is when you're trying to watch a match or you're trying to stream the lobby, and mm. the players just ready up before you're able to like you know get to the lobby screen again oh, after yeah. the match is over, and you're just stuck watching the lobby for about five six minutes. It's even worse than this. It's worse than this. Because it happens every time. Like let's just say. In 14, as long as you're sitting in the right position, you should be good to observe that lobby, right? Yeah. But everything resets completely after every match. And then, so you have to be on the ball. So if we're not like us, for instance, we still screwed this up, despite we're, we're all mic'd up and talking to each other. <laughs> we still screwed up getting in the right position. <laughs> if we stream a lobby and we have all the rest of the goons... And you know how they can be. Just hitting they're that impatient. rematch button, baby. They're impatient. You think they're going to get out of there? It's going to be first come, first serve, man. You can't give these people that opportunity to take over. Because <laughs> they'll do it every time. No, 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 no. Let me get one more. Let me get one more. How many times have you been at, like, a casual setup and somebody told you that and it almost led to a full-blown fight where it was like, no, let me, let me get one more. No, dude, it was two out of three. It was two out of three. Motherfucker, it was two out of three. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know? But the thing is, like, the reason why it happens like that, because not only do we all get booted to the waiting room, but mm. the moment you put yourself into a player slot, it auto readies. You can't turn it off. So if yeah. two people just get in the player slot like they're used to doing in Cable 14, they just get in the player slot, and when everybody's ready, they hit OK. That doesn't that extra step does not exist. The okay uh, is already a given the moment you're in there, which means you and I in a rush to get back in place because we're sick of getting kicked back into the waiting room and yeah. it's fucking up our stream timing. We just go in, we just go in there. And then Gibby tells us, guys, I wasn't in the waiting slot. <laughs> oh shit. Dude, it's so hard to train yourself too, especially with this game, because I really enjoy playing this game. To not be like, all right, let's get back in there. You know, I want to keep playing. You know, like you have to train yourself to like, <laughs> okay, let's decompress from this match we just <laughs> had. Let's make sure we're all in there. You know, it like really. Let's all use our it, inside voices and count to ten before we get back into the rematch slot. 
That's what Dude, it I will like. tell you. How crazy would it be? And, and you know what? You're right. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I think they are going to fail. Because how is ranked so intuitive, but lo like casual lobbies are not. Exactly. It, it makes no sense. So the only thing I could come up with is that it wasn't intentional. It but now in, was in, intentional. Okay, okay. In saying that, though, from what the product that we have now, it's like we talk about this all the time, man, because I play a lot of games that don't have lobby systems, even a spectator mode. Oh, man, we've been but struggling. Sh but shout outs to Fexo for finally adding a spectator mode. God, man, I wish that would have been like that a while ago because I was really trying to rep that game. But it is what it is. But they put it in. It doesn't matter. It's great for that community. They're not going to, I don't think I'm going to get it for uh, KF13 anytime soon. I was hoping Five Special were, were gonna, uh, was going to get it because they got that update. <laughs> That's what I'm going to bring up after this. Um, but no. But we've been talking about this at length over the past years of the, how important the lobby system is for your game. It's just think about it this way right now, right? Like a lot of people are streaming Samshell. They're doing pretty decent numbers, right? If you can actually have interaction with the people that you usually play with, in the lobby system, just like Do 14 is such a great case in point, mm -hmm. especially for us, because I, I feel like everybody who plays with us has had such success with the lobby system in 14. And that shit doesn't even um, work perfectly. It, and yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It's, but but it's just enough. Yeah. Right. And that j has just become so important to the growth of especially a game like this, of like Samurai Showdown that hasn't had a real good shot in modern times, in the mainstream. Mm. And here we are. Now, it's still really early, and they could still address that problem. And but I, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, like, they, like, I agree they can address the problem, and I also think it's a pre – I don't – I'm don't. i not I'm not a programmer. I'm not a coder. Never built yeah. netcode from the ground up for anything. But I got to believe, if you've got something that works for you, and you're – I don't know. Oh, I don't even know if they're cutting and pasting it, but I know that they can they can do this, you know? I know they can make this system work. I think it's going to happen pretty quickly. I don't expect this to be longer than, <clears throat> hopefully not longer than a month. And that's that's being really generous with the turnaround on this. SNK in the past has seen bugs that have been fairly damaging to the flow of the enjoyment of their game. And this is for KOF 14, you know? And they've yeah. nipped it in the bud, like, almost immediately, you know? We never even got to see Ramon's Infinite in a lot of tournaments because it was gone already. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, too, is that the situation that the game's in right now, it's not a permanent situation. Clearly, just by the way that they've been addressing a lot of the issues that they found beforehand. Also, this other thing. They never, never did a beta. Almost every modern release has done a beta of some sort, right? I, I, maybe you could find an obscure one that didn't, but you go with, I know I saw Guilty Gear do I know I saw we played Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball one twice. I know Tekken did it. Tekken Street Fighter Five did it. did it. Yeah, exactly. And this one did it. Now maybe this is kind of like pointless to bring up, but I feel like, hey, dude, like that's not bad for not having a, a beta. But then you can look at it like uh, Why glass didn't have half a beta? empty. Well, you can, yeah, exactly. You can look at it <laughs> half empty too. Like, well, maybe if you would have had a beta, but. In saying that, in their current situation, I definitely feel like it's going to get addressed. My review of totally... I, I feel like I have to give separate reviews for this. It's like, the game? Probably one of the best first out-the-gate games that i played that's come from out of SNK in a, in a while. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It's super fun, and, and to me, that's the most important thing. Am I having fun playing this game? Are the hours just flying by? Do I... A am I really motivated to learn this game? Absolutely, yes, 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 all across the board. Uh, there hasn't been a day yet where I'm like, ah, you know what, I don't see myself playing this game in the future. And I was afraid of that. Yeah. I was afraid that I was going to feel that way about this game. And you know what's funny? So were a lot of other people. They felt that way too. Where it's like, I don't know if I'm going to stick with Sam Show. But after they've had a good crack at it, I think most of us would say, it was like, yeah, we're going to be playing this down the road. And that's a really good thing to happen for a game, at least at this point right now. Um, I would echo your review of the base game. Yeah. Um, for me, and I'm sure as much for me as it is for you and every other SNK 
a lifelong fan. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's great to see them do what we know they can do. Do what we always knew they were capable of doing with a game, not just mechanically, because we knew their mechanical their mechanics were were good. We knew they were covered on that front. Visually, they actually pulled it off. You know, yeah. Um, after K of thirteen, a lot of people were just like, "Yo, man, like, when is, when's SNK going to do the next K of thirteen? They made two games that look like that. The fourth, yeah. the next one's gotta look great, you know? Right. And then we got fourteen, and you know." Try as you know, people might. We could not make that more than what it was visually. You know, even with the visual update, there were still some issues with how that game looked, and it held it back. And mm -hmm. it sucked because we were people who, you know, we had we had good times with that game regardless of that. You know, and we couldn't really, we couldn't really, really, no one could really relate to us like that. And that, and that's fine. You know, like we weren't, we weren't salesmen. We weren't trying to pitch people on playing KOF 14. But Just Think about the jump, though, in presentation yes. alone. Yes. In Samurai Showdown, you know, it, it's 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 completely night and day. And I and I don't want to say I don't want to understate the amount of work that went into fourteen, but the amount of work that obviously went into making Samurai Showdown what it is right now is just a complete one eighty from that. You know, mm -hmm. that is it's absolutely different levels, and it also leaves room that to see SNK grow further and they are going to grow further because we've seen what they're capable of and if I if this, if this game's any indication they're not even reaching 100% potential yet you know yeah man I'm excited and, and, and um, you know obviously this part of the game like it's coming it's getting reviewed by me from a perspective of like I like to play games competitively yeah so I didn't dip much into the story and I didn't dip much into the the, the the AI thing. I wish I had time to mess with that, but I kind of don't understand how that works. So I can't kind of can't say my piece on those other things. However, presentation, like I said, the lobby, the concept's cool as hell, man. Like when you go into the lot, you create the casual uh, gaming lobby. It's and then actually what we it's, wanted too. Like there's no extra works. slots. And we don't have to worry about people coming into our lobby and then playing in other in other rooms. You know, like they have yeah, to play in the room available. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the base games, it's great. It's a great, great game. I would give it. Uh, what's our, what's our, what's our like, scale here? I don't. I don't know. Uh, how should we measure these? Oh, we'll go with uh, max being five. Okay, five. All right. Uh, I would give it, dude, because I'm so biased. <laughs> because I love SNK so much, and I love Samurai Showdown and his characters, and I think. The, the game so far, right now, currently at where we're at, this game, I would have to give it either an A minus or a B plus, which is saying a lot, man. Like, yeah. I don't think you can say that a lot for an initial release on the game. No. Uh, for the base game, now online, dude, it's like D or F. Uh, outside of ranked, I guess that that'll bump it up, you know. Probably like D plus, cause cause ranks legit. Uh, the netcode itself, it's hit or miss. Like it's kind of like KOF for me. Like for me, I actually have good connection with a lot of people, like one on one. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's because we were multiple people in the lobby or what it was that made our our connection absolutely terrible. Real talk, it but, might just be me, man. I think Comcast is like just not even trying to work anymore. You know. Oh uh, well, maybe, yeah. but but like if it did feel. Uh, like KOF 14, which for me is a positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the Neko worked really well for me, uh, and I could play across country and do pretty well. Um, it seems to be the same here, but again, this is for me. Um, yeah, uh, rank bumps it up, I guess, but uh, the really valuable thing to me was the casual lobby, and I feel like it was really badly executed yeah like the value because we are content creators the value of lobbies for twitch streamers is it, it's impossible to overstate it um one of the things that i always regretted about 13 was that we couldn't do endless lobby streams you know like you watched this you got to see all these marvel players and these street fighter 4 players run these endless lobbies and, and just leave oh, the yeah. computer on and go to work and make money 
because people were there all day playing on this person's stream in their lobby. You know, you couldn't do it's, that with our games. It, it's such a for me streaming KOF fourteen has been such a fun experience. Having a lobby open, having the people in chat interact with me and play with me at the same time, and it's just a you're missing out on a really cool experience if you can't do that. You, you are. And, and that, unfortunately, I want that so bad for Samurai Showdown, man. Like, I want to be able to share this experience with other people. But you can't right now. You, you literally have to can't. It. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. You, I mean, you could, but it's, you wouldn't ask anyone to go through <clears throat> this much trouble in your own house. You know, you're basically saying, all right, once you guys get done playing, get the fuck out, come back in, and whoever gets to the controller first gets to play the yeah. next match. Like, who would you like? What kind of punk, like Brewster's million shit is that, man? I don't. So, I don't. I, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a slightly different kind of review, though. So in the base game, I'll, I'll match that. I think four to five stars or whatever Goonheads is, is safe. It's fair. I yeah. think there's some things with the character balance that I'm not really feeling. There's a lot of things that, tool set wise. I'm a little underwhelmed with at this point, but that's something that could grow on me. Although some characters, I don't think they're ever going to get any better unless they're actually touched by developer hands, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's just that out the window for that. And, I'm not, and normally character balance doesn't bother me like that, but it just feels like some of these characters were not as thought out as they could have been. Dude, just play Genjiro, bro. What is your problem, bro? Why are you doing this? I'm not talking about Kyoshiro, although he's a great example of that. Anyway, um, so I give it four out of five based upon that. Um, the net play experience, <clears throat> I think I give it a C. I give Ooh. it a middle of the road C because I do give points for intent. I think that SNK tried to do something that they, not, the, not something they had never done before, but they tried to uh, expediate, uh, what's the word exactly? They tried to... Wait a minute, wait a minute. So if, if, if you tell me that if I sell you a car that's meant to drive down the road and it fails to drive down the road, that you'd be like, well, I see where your intent was. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not going to give you an F. Well, I'm still not going to, I'm still going to get my money back, but I'll, I'll give you a C on Yelp or something. Yeah. <laughs> You're a nice guy. Okay. I'm a nice guy. Continue. No. Continue. I, I enjoy the idea of what they went for here, and I don't think they did that just just to be like, fuck it, we did something. You know, I think they were actually you know, trying yeah. to uh, be efficient. I think. They I mean, were trying it's not to judging them here. as people, you know. No, it's no, like, no, no, no. I'm, just, I'm talking about like, as developers. I'm you know? sure they did mean for it to come out well. But, like, at the end of the day, the product is the product. The product is the product. The things that you can't look past are, does it work for me? That's why I gave it a C. If I wanted to give it all the points I wanted to, then I would give it a B, just play rank mode. You know? If you're playing lobbies, you know, what the fuck's wrong with you? I'm not sure. like that, though. <laughs> I think that, especially for the community that was was basically keeping SNK in the papers for the last uh, couple of years, uh, those dudes love lobbies. You know? They don't mm -hmm. really do ranked. And the fact that lobbies are kind of messed up, is a huge downer you know that's something that it, it at, at out the box that should work you know mm. out the box the whole net play thing should work there's it's 2019 there's no reason why this shouldn't work there are games out there that are unfortunately not that popular but are mm. doing net code better than the big hitters samurai should i mean <clears throat> one of the big hitters at this point um I think it's time for SNK, and I think they're the perfect company to do this because they've already proven that they're willing. They're willing to reach out to outside uh, forces for not necessarily just advice, but for guidance. You know, for for a way to go because it's only going to help. And I think it's time for them to reach out there and say, "Hey, who who can do this? You know, like who's who's got a good idea." Obviously, they were talking to somebody because they wouldn't flip the netcode on the Sam Show V Special for PS4 and then put it on Steam. Now it's running on the, uh, the rollback netcode. If I were to say, hey, if you were to ask me, hey, hey, are you hopeful for this game eventually being what it was intended to be? I would say yes. Mm. Would you ask me, if you asked me, should I invest in this game? I would say yes, but if you asked me my score 
on the game as is, I would say the game itself, 4.5 out of 5. The net, the net play experience, 1.5 if I'm being nice. As it is. But like I said, though, if you were to ask me if, to invest in this, I'd say, yeah, absolutely. I believe in it. it the, the game's going to work. It, the, it's going to come together. I have 100% faith. And you know what? They, they, they've given enough in the past month to show you that they're willing to go that Right. They've taken steps. That, for this game. For, you know? Yeah, and they've taken steps that other companies have not in the past. And yeah. they and still and now I don't want to sit here and compare this game and SNK to other companies in their games at all, really. Those are mm -hmm. two different, you know, Two different companies, literally. Um, yeah. But it's it's hard not to acknowledge that they've been moving a lot quicker than those other interests uh, in terms of Samurai Showdown. So it is very heartening to hear that, you know, like, you know, <clears throat> Crispy Kaiser was on Twitter today saying, hey, man, we hear your frustrations. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just as frustrated as you are. and We're working to get this fixed. So they're definitely on top of it, and I believe them when they say that because they've already proven that they are able to do that. Yeah, you know, and also uh, want to give thanks to S and Cage for just in general really supporting the community. Yes, by like J Crispy Kaiser's been hanging around a lot of the no, the, man, the boy putting work, dude. Shout out um, to Crispy Kaiser, new dad by the way. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats, man. Um, that's a big step. Yeah, yeah. I'm, try I'm trying to get there myself. Hey, no hurry. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, SNK, uh, the people at Athlon, they let me go over there with Gibby and try out the game early. Um, we were able to debut Shiki here. Uh, the tournament that they had at Combo Breaker to get the first trailer for Yoshitora. Uh, yeah, man, it's so a lot of support in general. In general, the support the game's getting and stuff like that. Like I said, I would definitely invest in this game. You're, I feel like you're in good hands. Uh, but uh, oh, before I get to the next or our final points, how about ju just go ahead? Let me let me look at this real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> you want me to put Let's something up? Let, no, no, no. Let's read up. Gibby's oh the list like, okay yeah yeah if yeah. I can't make it to the show tonight okay guys so uh Gibby couldn't make it tonight because he's a uh, big shot and he's out at CEO and he's uh doing cool stuff out there with Samurai Showdown and uh, the other SK people on the publisher he's having uh, a good time in Daytona oh yeah Damn. hope he's sweating balls out there he's sweating something out there man anyways I'm gonna read off this list um of what Gibby left us. Of his review, he didn't give us a number or anything. He just Bullet said points, things he man. liked, didn't like, or are they all things he didn't like? Okay, lobbies are objectively garbage. Quite possibly the worst for fighting games ever. Yikes! He ain't wrong. Okay. okay. Online is mixed experience. I played people across country with no issues. <laughs> but wow, underline this... underline here on this part but hell pockets had a ton of issues with him and i'm pretty sure it's hell pockets and norcal issues <laughs> so uh much. another point not a fan of some hitboxes another point genjiro is blatantly strong sure true. another point sure. darley is beautiful and strong <laughs> and the very very last point I can't wait to see more non SNK Samurai Showdown players get into this game and take over. Ooh, he does not like you guys. Ooh. Anyways, that <laughs> is his review. Gibby, wish you could have been here, man. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Yeah, that dude sold out. <laughs> no, yeah. No, no KOF players in my Samurai Showdown. And he's the reason <laughs> why we didn't have codes day one. Yeah, he is the reason why, dude. I had to freaking send ninjas to his house to get my code. Damn. <laughs> shyster uh but yeah man uh how about we uh throw out the numbers again just to wrap it up on what we thought the uh whole experience was the whole the experience game. was all right so, so got... for the game chris what did you give the base game 
without considering online play. All right, so the ga- the base game on its own, if I'm just playing offline, I'm going to give it a four out of five slaps to the ass. It's a great experience. I'm having a lot of fun playing the game. It's a great game to commentate at any time of the day, believe me. I know. Um, it's going to only grow from here, I believe. It's got a lot of hype behind it because it's a very simplistic game that anybody can get into. Yeah. Okay, I only so- got a... What's up? Go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, my only gripe is some character balance. That's it. Okay. So, for me, I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 as well. Um, the game's really fun. Uh, I picked top tier, so I don't know what you guys are playing. And it's, it's very enjoyable for me. <laughs> uh, uh, the visuals, the presentation, fantastic. I'm having a great time with the game. I have a lot of hope for it. Um, definitely invest your time. You are not wasting it at all. 4 out of 5 for me and four out of five from Hell Pockets for the base game. Now, let's move on to the online portion of Samurai Showdown. Chris Hell Pockets, what do you rate the online experience? Well, I actually Show? I give the online experience a a a, a uh, hesitant two point five out of five. I think that the improvements that they tried to make are very in theory, impressive, and I hope that they get fixed so that we can experience the full brunt of their, uh, you know, efficiency, basically. Uh, they got rid of the extra rooms in the lobbies, which means people can't just come up in your room and just play in other slots and lag your whole lobby while you're trying to stream. That's great. Um <laughs> And the rank mode works. The rank mode has rematch mode on it, the rematch, rematch option on it. So you can actually play in, in an, un- 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 uh, an endless set with your uh, with your buddy if you find him. Um, unfortunately, if you want to play with your buddy, you're going to have a rough time because the lobby, the casual matches are absolute trash. It's a garbage mm-hmm. fire in there right now. Oh, that hurt. I could tell that hurt to it say. It definitely that. hurt, man. I was, I got a little choked up saying that, you know. And I and I like I said earlier, like I definitely give them points for trying, but it's going to take a little bit more than that. This is 2019. The net play experience needs to be better. Flat out. Okay. So just to recap one more time, what's the score? Uh 4 out of 5 for the base game and 2.5 out of 5 for actually no 4.5 out of the for, for the base game because the music is awesome there we go uh okay. 2.5 out of 5 for the online experience because it it don't work okay so for me uh i'll give it a one out of five for the online experience um it just doesn't work the way it's supposed to uh I, the only reason i'm giving it a you know i i i, I would give it a 1.5 and the 0.5 would be because rank mode actually works really well it really does mm. if you're only into ranked and you know what? Since I don't really play games in ranked at all, you guys are going to have a blast <laughs> on ranked. But for me, the value of the lobby system is so damn important that I feel like that's what's taking a big hit for me on the score. So 1.5 for me. So once again, four, technically rounding down, four out of five for both of us on the base gameplay. Mm-hmm. Chris, you had two point something. For the online 86. play, and I had one one out of five uh, for the online play. It's basically a two. Yes. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, average um, number two. Not really though. Not really. Not no, the really, point. Though. The point <laughs> matters. <laughs> the point five matters. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, that has been our review of the new Samurai Showdown. Like we said, invest your time. It is worth it. This game is fun. Play offline with your friends. Go to locals. Uh, stream the game. Do whatever you can. This game's got legs. And see you at Evo for this review. Uh, oh God. Thank you very much for this review. And uh, watch all our other stuff on you. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So the review's done. We got that off our chest. Mm-hmm. Hell Ah, <sighs> I mean... Samurai Showdown's just been in the headlines. So much for us. Quite a bit. It's such an exciting time. Um, I guess the only thing that we really have left to talk about is the future, at least I'm interested in, is in the future of the tournament scene. So that's something that, uh, they, they, they let's just, let's just face it. They, they got us mm. thirsty for that when they, during the uh, promotion cycle for this game, um, they started out by announcing that the game would be available at Evo 2019 before it even 
launched, basically. You know, we knew that before the game even came out. Um, that was, as far as I know, the first time an SNK game has ever, ever been allowed in Evo before it's come out. That's awesome for us. That's all for, awesome for SNK fans and Samurai people that want to play Samurai Showdown. Um, on top of that, they announced <clears throat> a uh, Pro Tour. Which is featuring what? Pro Tour, known as SNK World Tour, and it's going to be featuring Samurai Showdown and the King of Fighters 14. That's right, folks. Still supporting a really successful game. And uh, as somebody that plays a lot, or has played a lot in the lobbies, if you're considering getting that game, there is a, a lot of people playing. Oh, yeah. Um, in lobbies for KY14. The, the online uh, lifespan has been pretty long. So And, dude, dude and, I don't want to go back to the review, but that's what happens when you got a good lobby. Yeah. For sure, man. Like, yeah. you build communities around that stuff. Oh, yes. That, that, that's why I'm so happy that 14 is still getting pushed Yo. because the community is still there. People still play it. And it's a really good game. Dude, really shout good. out to top of three-man cell in Japan, dude. The kind of stuff that they've been putting on with the Japanese players and the Hong Kong players and the Taiwan players because their net code's good enough to play each other, apparently, has been mm -hmm. phenomenal. I want to work with those guys. Yep, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the tur the tournament scene, the, uh, their, their own... SNK World Championship Tour that they're doing. I always forget the official name. Well, they tried this but... already. Remember, they already tried to do an official SNK Pro Tour um, back in 2016 when the game first launched. Mm -hmm. um, they had a finals in Japan. We worked it with uh, Nerd Josh yeah, that was uh, fun. Via, via proxy. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been waiting for the second coming of that ever since. And I, I, I don't want to say this is it. This is obviously quite possibly a totally different way of presenting it but mm -hmm. i want to say that it's it it's a good time for them to do it they've got a lot of positive energy behind their brands uh ko yeah. 14 at the very least is popping with the community yeah <clears throat> so why not do that but what i want to know and i'm sure what everybody else wants to know is like when what is this going to look like when is this going down we know that there's a stop in august or do we know that I think they mentioned something in August. Uh, it's like you would assume I would that the assume. stop would be, in, would be at Evo. That's what uh, a lot of people were assuming, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. That that That's the only thing about the tour that I'm like, well... Well, it, it, think about it. Uh, right now, the game just came out. We kind of want to, you know, let that settle. And then maybe, like, a week or two from now, make an announcement about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's really no rush. If I, I don't, I don't think it's gonna change the amount of people that are gonna enter or not. If they are a part of the tour or not, I think it's just gonna be like a little extra incentive. Like, oh shit, if I win this, I'm about to be on the tour, baby. You're by. They, by the way, in case you guys forgot, uh, they're sponsoring players. The actual company sponsoring players for this stuff, which is unheard of. We, it, I think it, we did a little showdown yes. about this. I was excited, uh, but yeah. Uh, they started that after Evil Japan 2018, or was it 2019? I forget. I forget how they numbered that. But they, just, they started it after the most e recent Evil Japan, and it's it's been it's been working, man. That's the crazy part. Like I I definitely expected one or two events where these guys rolled out there, and that was it. And not because of anything SNK was going to throw up against them. I just thought they weren't going to travel that much because they were just like, yo, man, like it's fun to play KOF. But I got other stuff to do with my life. No, these guys are going everywhere, man. Score, ET, Lagia, M Dash. These dudes are going to tournaments that they have never even been uh, a, a topic at. You know, it's like the international scene for KOF got bit by the bug of competition, and then like, dude, let's let's do this, dude. Because you know? these guys, think about it. Like those guys specifically, they've just been playing for fun for years, mm -hmm. and they're really good. And then all of a sudden, there's like these tours that are going to happen, you know, You're gonna or fly like there's international competitions. You know? You're going to send us places. It's like we work for SNK, and all we got to do is be good at the game. Not literally, of course, but it it it's it is it is damn near incredible, Abe, hey, to mm. think that SNK went from. Not producing anything after KOF 13 for the most part. We thought we were done. 
to Dude, base it's not where we were done like at twelve. Yeah, like twelve was a disaster. That was a wrap. It was a, it was a tumultuous four or five years. Let's put it that way. It sure was because communication was. Dude, literally as zero as it. <laughs> yeah. If you remember our K third, they released it and then they went dark for like a year. Yeah. And then they're like, "Hey, there's an update coming and it's coming to console." Dude, rejoice! But how horrible were those times? And, and even before that, you know, like with what happened with twelve, you know, all the it was rough for like good long time. It's been rough. But you didn't now, even play KOF back then. I'm not not you. I'm just saying, like you know, in general, people uh, didn't even play KOF in that point. And then when 13 came out, it was like you know, breath of fresh air. Oh man, imagine if everything got supported the way that it was supposed to. Like, we tried. We tried. <laughs> so much bigger. But anyways, this opportunity with Samurai Showdown and KOF 14 uh, with this tour, I mean, they're doing it right, man. Uh, yeah. They, as and, and, far as what they've announced. As soon as one of those events happens, we'll have a review on that. We definitely <laughs> will. You know, like I cannot wait for them to announce a date for the first stop. And hopefully after that, they'll announce all the other stops because it is a tour and people need to get ready mm -hmm. to go to certain events. I'm assuming across the world because it is a world tour. Um, yeah. I don't know what events they could take advantage of. but they, And considering when it's starting, they could be appearing at events that normally aren't on other Pro Tour schedules as well as those that are, you know? Mm -hmm. Imagine you go to, like, you know, a CPT premiere event, and, like, half of the CPT bracket is playing Samurai Showdown as well. It's going to be absolutely... I, I can't even call that, you know? I don't know who would win that. There are so many talented players in those pools that can mess with Sam Show at, at, a, mm -hmm. at a basic... At the basic level, and then there's good players also on top of that. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of ecosystem you want to cultivate if you are making any fighting game in this community. Oh, funny you mentioned that though. Didn't Wizard put up a post about like it's nearing the record that KOS yes. set for itself? We for are we are possibly going to beat the shirt monsters. Sans t-shirts. Sans t-shirts. Now at any moment they could toss out. A uh, Iroha t-shirt. And then we're definitely beating the t-shirt monsters with other t-shirt <laughs> monsters. But right now we're doing it the right way. We're doing it the clean way. I That's the reason why I signed up. Is because I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my part to get those numbers up. Because, you know, I, I think this game can do it. And I, I if it does it this time, I'm like, yo, man, this is like the shot we needed. This is the shot we didn't get back in 2012. Yeah, man. Things are looking really good. Um Really, really good. Really positive. Got a great game on their hands without a uh, support from the company. And, uh, you know, Gibby out there doing uh, good work and holding it down. That liaison uh, Potentially shit. trying to beat King Goon at some point. Uh, nah. Not going to let it happen. Not I'm going to rule forever. Mm -mm. But, uh, yeah, man. Uh, the cards are all there, man. And a lot of people have jumped on and been supporting the game, streaming it. Good times. Right right now is, is a good time despite uh, the drawbacks that the game does have. Yeah. Uh, the community is winning. Uh, but beyond that, Chris, is there any other stuff that you wanted to bring up today? As this returning episode that we've been trying to make happen. Trying to for like three weeks Finally now. here before. Who knows if we get to do another one? Because the next one's going to be at Evo, actually. We're going to do it from the Goon Suite. Everybody's invited. <laughs> Yeah, don't be surprised if that get canceled. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we're here, and if you have anything else you wanted to get sir, uh, to talk about, talking Let point, me see. bring it up now, sir. Let me see. Well, we talked about the Evo numbers. We talked about the Pro Tour that we don't know a lot about, but, you know, it's going, mm. it's coming up, apparently. Um, I guess the only thing else I would want to mention... Huh... I think that's it. I don't want to, because like, I was thinking about, man, who would be the first sponsored Samurai Showdown player specifically for the game? But I feel like that that can happen way later. That's a conversation for another time. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's definitely a, a whole episode right there. Um, oh, there's one thing we forgot to talk about. The DLC, huh? Yes. It's like they announced the whole first season of the, DLC. The whole goddamn pack, dude. You know what? The other thing, too, that we mentioned, that we didn't mention in the review 
is that they're get, you know what that needs to bump it up to be honest with you. We get the free the DLC that, pack, the season one. Yeah, man, especially compared comparative to like other games. Like, I don't know, man. That's what I, that that's why my ultimate review. Like, buy it, go buy it. Go if buy I, it. If if it were rent or buy, I say go buy it. We'll put, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll put it in text. Thing. We'll put that in post. Yeah. <laughs> um, buy it. Buy the game. <laughs> Get the yes. free DLC because the DLC pack is going to include Rimorudu, which is going to be coming out, I think, next month. August, I think it's August. Is it August? Okay, it's August. Well, she's yeah. she's coming out fairly soon. It's going to be followed up with Basara. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to be followed up. Who's going to be followed by Kazama Kazuki, and then mm -hmm. Wanfu to close out season one. All of these characters are free. They announced them yesterday. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, I don't know how much better you can get, you know? I don't, I don't know how you do this any better than they did. I don't know, but they definitely did something different, and I like it. I, 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 I don't see how you couldn't like it. You know, there's really, if you are a consumer or just a player or whatever, if you're on the consumer side and someone tells them tells you you can get free DLC, you, you don't have to even buy the game, bro! That's the crazy shit. No, it's it's not even free unless you pre-order it. You could just get it. You just like, get it, man. You can never buy the game and claim it. You know. I mean, they you, get you either you way. You don't but, have to buy the game. Like you don't all. have to buy the game at all. You just get the characters, and they're they're cool with it. They're like whatever, man. But you got to need that game eventually, right? You know what's crazy is is how they did that, and they didn't even like announce that in, in any of the marketing that they did no nah, what didn't. what they said was like hey if you buy it you'll get it for free i feel like at some point people were like fuck it dude just give it to them <laughs> just let them get it yeah because they were gonna be like whatever man they're gonna because if they get it for free they're and they don't have the game they're just gonna be sitting there with the data on their fucking they're gonna be with the unlock data they're gonna be like man i really want to play these characters and i'm tired of taking my ps4 to locals just so i can play on other people's discs that's right that's right. That shit is is something else, man. And what a and what a group of characters. Oh yeah, you get the, yeah. the the goon guarantee, the goon stamp of approval. Yeah, good stuff. Um, but I think that's all I got to say about this game. It's once again an amazing experience to play, and I can only see good things happening uh, going forward. Not just because the game is solid, and but because it has a great company behind it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have got to the tail end of our and I'd like to say on behalf of the goons thank you guys for joining us and if you have not clicked the follow icon please follow us and support the goons support the other people streaming Samurai Show then the other community members uh, keep watching the streams keep watching uh, myself Meta Abe Hell Pocket and Manchester who is Busy doing other stuff. In inversely, uh, you can also hit the sub button down there. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, man. Get these sweet, sweet emotes. Hit them oh, with that. Baby. Put it on them. Oh, baby. Hit them, man. Yes. Hit them. There it is. Yeah, man. Uh, so far, thank you guys for. Thank you guys for the subs. We've been getting some pretty goddamn good views, man. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of you guys. And uh, yeah, like I said. Uh, there's a bright future for this game and this community, and uh, as long as you guys keep showing up, we'll keep putting out content. And uh, SNK will keep keeping on fixing these things and making stuff better. We believe in them, and I think they believe in us, man. That's really the the story here. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not enough that we they know that we want their shit and we trust them and we and they and we believe in everything they do, but they believe that if they give us the shit. The good mm -hmm. shit that we will we will buy it and we will support them and we will get other people to support them and man that's a good feeling. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, like I said, the future's strong right now. People are hype, and you know what? What are we here for, Chris? We're here to fan the flames, man. Oh, definitely. We're out there with the palm trees, with the palm leaves. I'm out. There, I'm out there throwing the gasoline <laughs> on the tear discussion. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you want to do yourself a favor? You want to you want to have a headache right now? Go on Twitter and retweet a Samurai Showdown tier list, and I guarantee you, you're gonna regret you did that. But it's a good time nonetheless. Whoa! <laughs> it's uh, ain't yeah. shooting already, shit. Yeah, man. 
All right, folks. Uh, it's been great. Uh, Chris, Hell Pockets, close us out. And if you haven't already, check out the review that we just did. We're going to be putting it up on YouTube real soon mm -hmm. on, on top of all the other content that we have. Uh, please check out our YouTube channel as well. Uh, Chris, your last words and close us out. All right, so I want to thank everybody for watching this return episode of Fatal Showdown. If you're getting in here late, you can not worry. It'll be archived along with review sectioned out for Samurai Showdown. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode and we'll be trying to bring you some more in the future. Obviously, I keep mentioning it. Show up to Evo. Come to the Goon Suite at the Mandalay Bay August 1st. We'll be there streaming, having a good time. If you've been to a Goon Suite before, it's a good time just hanging out. Maybe even get some exhibitions going if people are feeling froggy. Um, other than that, you know, y'all keep having a good year. And, uh, man, I guess I need a new sign-off, huh? Because can't do the keep it super and if you know what I'm saying I think that's a little played out mm, how about they trying to think of something Sam show me. I'm not gonna do embrace death I feel like that's already taken no 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 uh, <laughs> uh, don't waste your burst on the thirst <laughs> Pretty good. Hey, shout out, right. shout out to all you guys bursting on the first round. That the made, thirsty I, burst, man. That the thirsty burst. <laughs> that warms my heart. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm tired. Anyway, well, whatever, man. Whatever. That's works. good. No, I can't, I can't beat that, dude. <laughs> thirsty for some burst. Don't waste right, the burst folks. on the thirst. All right, folks. Uh, thank you, guys. We're out of here. Have a good night. Chris, you want to host somebody for it, please? Uh, yeah. Who's alive right now? Hold uh, on. Throw to Josh. Throw to Josh.